approaches. Two approaches can be taken when making something at nanoscale. One is top-down approach, another bottom-up approach. In top-down approach, we can see that the bulk material is synthesized or separated in formation of nanoparticles. And in bottom approach, we see that the molecules or atomic levels form a building blocks and nuclei and its growth is in process for preparation of nanoparticles. In top down approaches, we are having different techniques. They are mechanical milling, etching, laser, sputtering, electro exp explosion. In bottom up approach, we have green synthesis, chemical reduction, molecular condensation, chemical vapor deposition, laser pyrolysis, sol gel process, spinning, supercritical fluid synthesis. Top down approach. Top down approach is analogous to making a stone statue. The process involves wastages used in fibers, rarely used in manufacturing of nano tubes. Top down approaches are classified or done in two ways lithography, cutting, etching and grinding. Lithography is mainly used in fabricating electronic device or chip masking. Cutting, etching and grinding used in precision engineered surface. Top down approach starts with bulk material and cuts away material to make what we want. Bottom approach. Approach one would take to build a house. Here we see less wastage as strong covalent bonds will hold the constituent parts together. Limited in how big the structure can be made. Approach has been used currently in making many of the nano particles. Bottom approach. Bottom approach can be done by three ways. One chemical synthesis, self assembly, positional assemblies. In chemical synthesis, we see particle molecules. Example in cosmetic fuel additives. In self assembly these are seen in crystal films or tubes example displays. In positional assemblies example experimental or molecular devices. Bottom up building what we want by assembling it from the building blocks such as atoms and molecules atom by atom, molecular by molecular or cluster by cluster. Challenges A critical issue of nanotechnology is that components, structures, their regime, size about whose fundamental behavior we are having very little understanding because they are too small for direct measurement, too large to be described by current rigorous first principle theory and computational methods. They exhibit too many fluctuations to be treated monolithically in a time and space. Too few to be described by statistical models. They are fragile and unstable in nature. Fusing together of nanoparticles when their surface touch. There are loss of special shape and properties when we are going to scale down. The most immediate challenge in nanotechnology is that we need to learn more about their properties at nanoscale. Universities, researchers, 
are rigorously studying how atoms fit together to form into a large structure we are still learning how quantum mechanics impact substance at nano scale because elements at nano scale behave differently when they do at their bulk form there are concerns that some nanoparticles could be toxic some doctors worry that nanoparticles are so small they could easily cross the blood brain barrier a membrane that protects the brain from harmful chemicals in the blood stream if we plan on using nanoparticles to each and every form right from clothing to our highways we need to ensure that they are not poisonous despite to the rapid development and escalating publication in this field there remains a number of challenges in product development and commercialization the key issues are health safety and environmental aspects of some nano materials and their regulatory status benefits and applications of nanotechnology many benefits of nanotechnology depends on the fact that it is possible to tailor make materials at extremely small scale to achieve specific properties thus greatly extending the materials science toolkit nanotechnology is helping to considerably improve revolutionize many technologies and industries below are the growing list of applications they are medical and healthcare everyday material and processes electronics and it energy environment and future transport benefits to highlight some of the nanotechnology applications so nanotechnology has a broader spectrum of application right from air filtration defense food and food processing fast moving consumer goods robotics space technology pharmaceutical cosmetics energy application oil and gas petroleum and water treatment nanotechnology is in our day to day life also let's see a video This is a man-made motor, a motor so small that more than 6,000 of them would fit on the head of a pin. Welcome to the world of the nanometer, a unit of measure that is one billionth of a meter. A nanometer is pretty small. Uh, one of the best analogies that I like to use is to compare it with a human hair. If you take a hair off of the top of your head, you can see that it's very thin. And now, if you take something that's a hundred thousand times thinner than that, that's a nanometer. The ability to observe and construct things this small is at the heart of nanotechnology. And what scientists have discovered is that at the nanometer scale, everyday materials start to act in unimaginable ways. For Jeffrey Grossman, a UC Berkeley nanoscientist working with the National Science Foundation, that's exactly the draw. The behavior of nanomaterials changes or can change when the size becomes so small when compared with a larger amount of that same material. When you have things that sort of start changing the way they behave and now you have the ability to control that, um, it sort of opens up a, an entirely new phase space of material. Suddenly it's like the periodic table projects out into a new dimension. <laughs> it's not just that we have the list of elements, it's where we can change their sizes and each size is a little bit uh, different than every other when it's very very small. The fact that you can customize nanomaterials unique behaviors has already turned nano into the buzzword of the decade. Some researchers predict nanotechnology could lead to faster computer chips tiny medical devices that repair clogged arteries and new filters to clean water pollution 
As novel as nanomaterials seem, humans have actually used them for hundreds of years. For centuries, the colors in stained glass windows, for example, have been the result of a controlled heating and cooling process that adjusts the size of tiny crystals in the glass. That's medieval nanotechnology. What's different now is that uh, we have the ability to look on the nanoscale and see what's happening. That gives us an ability to design materials rather than to just find them by a kind of accidental process. But understanding and controlling how nanomaterials act can be tricky. Every time you chop the material in two, say you go from a crystal that's uh, 100 atoms across to 50 to 25, each time you do that, almost all the properties of the material really change. So these changes are very radical and quite dramatic. If you take a piece of a material, say silicon, and you look at that material, it looks kind of dark charcoal. So it's not that interesting to look at. But now if you take out uh, your little nano ice cream scooper and you scoop out a nano sized chunk of that material and you look at that, all of a sudden it glows blue. And if you take a slightly bigger ice cream scooper out, it glows red. And so now you have a material that uh, completely changes the way it looks, the color that it is, um, just by changing its size. So the question is, why do nanomaterials behave so strangely? In the case of the nano ice cream scoop, the behavioral change happens when you start to make a material so tiny that its electrons are squeezed into a space smaller than they prefer. It's called quantum confinement. Another factor that shapes nanoscale behaviors is the relationship between volume and surface area. Things this small have much more outside than they have inside. The surface area of the material starts to skyrocket compared to its volume. And in fact, uh, when you get down this small, most of the material could be just surface, and very little of it is actually volume. And the reason why that's interesting is that the more surface you have, the more uh, reactions you can carry out on that surface. Uh, so you can do things like filtering much more efficiently. So you could filter water more effectively with more surface area. Our ability to observe and change things at the nanoscale has led to a host of new materials applications and has even made it possible for scientists to begin building working nanomechanical machines like this motor. But in the world of nanomachines, nature is still king. This ends the session.